welcome to the JTM Community Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Melvin. If you are watching this, you do know who this is, If uh, or you could know because she has been on the podcast, I believe, once before. If you are unsure or you are listening to this, we'll get to that in j- just a second. Of course, if you want to touch base with me, you can find uh, all of our info at j-tm.community. Uh, if you'd like to have a conversation of advancement advising or find local to the Mount Pleasant, Michigan area resources, there's also some national resources in that as well. Without further ado, my niece, Jocelyn. <laughs> is here with us right uh and uh, i'll ha- as we had chatted i'll have you uh introduce yourself of course if you're anyone's tuning in and you want the podcast specific stuff just uh same website j-tm.community just add forward slash um podcast to that and it'll take you exactly where you want to go uh the easiest thing you can do to be a part of the community uh every monday is a voting poll uh that goes live each monday morning as well as a new episode so you all based on your feedback and stories and info that you share with us that gets turned into a topic and then you all choose um every monday what that topic will be for a future episode Go ahead, Jocelyn. Well, I'm Jocelyn. I am 20. (laughs) I'll be 21 in September. Um, I am engaged, so we're looking at getting married soon. And (laughs) we're doing things a little backwards, but I am going to be a a mom soon. I'm doing August, so got some uh, exciting things to look forward to. Um, But, yeah. She's from the... Port Huron. Yeah, Port Huron area. And what do you do for work? Uh, I am a caregiver. <laughs> there we so go. I just about anybody that's like ranges from 55 and older. So, okay. So, uh, the structure of, and you and I have already chatted, the structure of what we're doing today is going to cover essentially. Four different topics, four episodes. Each one will be roughly about uh, 20 minutes. So the first topic that we will chat about is the idea of hobbies and activities that you feel greatly benefit you. And then the second will be the idea of life, but specifically the cleaning and decluttering portion um, of that. And then third will be managing anger and frustration. And then fourth, but not least, just last, will be finding yourself. Right. Uh, as you know, you will see a timer pop up. Um, so there'll be a 20 minute timer going, which makes it easier for folks to pick up um, and stop randomly as they need to. The yeah. Let's go ahead and dive into topic number four, because we're just both sitting here doting on your little brother at this point. Um, so topic <laughs> number that- four is finding <laughs> yourself. Again, you're in um, a moment within your life that is all about that. Oop, I think you froze. Are you back? Oh, you're moving. Uh, Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, yep, you're good. Okay. (laughs) I'm guessing something happened on your phone. Yeah, my thing popped up. I have 16% left, so I think I'm okay. I think we could do it. (laughs) The if the phone dies, then I'll just wrap up uh, and we'll be good. Okay. So again, uh, going into the last topic, uh, topic number four is that idea of finding yourself. You are in the moment and we just spent time on um, throughout each one of these topics. So the first one being uh, hobbies or activities that you feel beneficial. The second being the idea of life and decluttering and cleaning. And then thirdly, managing anger and frustrations, right, throughout each three of those kind of leads us to this one because we talked about what it looked like for you as a kid and going through various experiences, whether that was with your dad or mom or friends, relationships, right? And what that has begun to look like as you have transitioned into living an adult life and very, very soon to be the life of a parent. So when you think of that idea of finding yourself, (laughs) what does that even mean to you? Um, who you are as a person, honestly. Um, okay. although I've heard with 
like I've I've heard like my mom or some things on social media like TikTok and stuff is and when you become a mom like it's the I'm gonna go to becoming a mom because it's gonna happen in my life here pretty soon. Sure. Um, is that yes, it's the best thing ever, and that's part of who you are. But don't let that become all who you are, mm-hmm. because you're not just a mom. Like you need to find yourself too. You need to find things that make you happy. You mm-hmm. need to, if if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, where kind of the idea of becoming a parent, becoming a mother is a big part of who you are, but that's not the only thing you are. Yeah. Okay. I, and I'm sure like being a mother is great, but I just, I feel like a lot of people and a lot of moms, I, I mean, I'm not a mom just quite yet, but sure. I feel like those who are, I feel like they struggle with that in a way from like what I've, who I've talked to, um, because they just feel, I don't know how to explain it because I'm not saying that their kids are just awful. Like I'm sure they don't mean that by means. It's just, they need time for themselves. They need time to figure out who they are, what they enjoy, what they like doing. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I, I just feel like it's different for everybody. Yeah, what I hear you saying is the idea of how important and impactful and fulfilling and purposeful it is to be a mom at the same time being mindful that you don't lose yourself to it, that you still have your own joys in life and um, elements that are for you as well as as for the kids, which don't. Um, being as young as you are, for you having seen that experience and, and again, going into that transition for yourself uh, right now is profoundly insightful. It's the very idea of that I help a, a lot of parents uh, with and is not uncommon to um, have a negative impact in a relationship or a marriage is when the parents focus so much on their children and those children are inevitably going to grow up and be gone. Um, they experience what um, most people will recognize it as being empty nest, right? Um, is yeah. that the the birds have, the babies have flown the coop, right? Uh, and because they put all of their intentionality and effort and energy into that is they don't know who they are. And it's not uncommon that they don't even know who their husband or wife or partner is in that moment, right? Which, would yeah. lead, which can lead to a lot of hurt. Yeah, I feel like people don't do that is because they don't want to be selfish because they think selfish, selfish, being selfish is a bad thing. And that's not the case. I mean, you can be selfish in a positive way, like with that, Um, just because you're being selfish and you want to focus on you or each other's relationship and like keep the kids out of it doesn't mean that you don't love them any less. It's just you, you have to figure out who you are and what you want and need in life yeah it it kind of brings us to uh the idea or the metaphor and i'm sure most people have heard this is when you're traveling on an airline and they go through um their whole like safety spiel and they'll say if you are in charge of a child or the elderly or responsible for the care of someone if we hit turbulence what you're going to notice is oxygen masks will uh, drop from the ceiling you have to make sure you put yours on first, right? Mm -hmm. Which in a life metaphor, that can sound selfish, right? But if you don't get yours on, you're no good for the people you're responsible for. No, they're going to go with you. (laughs) You you have to, we all have to take care of ourselves, which goes back to the last uh, three topics that we talked about managing anger, right? You can, you can do that way better if you're taking care of yourself. Now be sleep deprived, be hungry, 
um, struggle with work, right? Get into a fight with your significant other and see how well you manage anger. Now, let's say you engage in a healthy, supportive relationship with your spouse or husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or partner. Um, do the things uh, going for the walks, right? Um, playing games to, to decompress, whatever those things are that help keep you into a better cognitive and emotional state. And now see how it is to manage anger. Those two things will be profoundly different. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, as, as a parent trying to give their children everything, uh, and the intention is remarkably good. I don't, I don't think that the intention is bad at all, but when you talk about finding yourself, uh, I think what, what you're also saying is in addition to finding yourself, it's equal, it's equally as important not to lose yourself. Yes. Yeah. So knowing that you are about to take that uh, dive in the next three and a half months, how do you do that? How do you be conscientious to not lose yourself? Because you're going to find yourself as a mother for sure. Oh, yeah. I And I'm sure I'll probably have a hard time, but I feel like there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, do you mind taking him for just 30 minutes or whatever? Even if it's just sure. to get a little workout in or to do your makeup or whatever it is. Um, just, I don't, just don't let yourself go, <laughs> if that <laughs> sure. makes sense. Yep. Because, yes, I, I don't know. Again, like I said, I feel like I'll probably struggle with it because, of course, you don't, you're not going to want to ask for help with any scenario. You, most people want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to ask for help. That's a hard thing to do. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess <laughs> we'll find out in a couple months. <laughs> it sounds like it will be important for you in both not losing yourself, but also kind of finding yourself to ask for help. Yeah, the same with, like, relationship-wise is me and Russell, I'd say. Um, I we are ones to not just give up. Like if we're having, I, I, I know it's going to be hard having a baby. I'm, I know it's not going to be easy, mm -hmm. but I know that we're just not going to give up. Like things can be worked on. Like you have to make an effort to fix things. So I don't know. So it sounds like being intentional. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to, some of the struggles that you're anticipating and you highlighting the idea of uh, engaging with each other and asking for help. How do you do that? And who are those people? Um, probably like Russell's parents or my, like mom, sure. um, Tyler, Tyler, he's Tyler's my brother, my older brother. <laughs> um, just, I don't know calling them saying hey do you mind coming over or can i drop them off for just like a second or or even for russell like hey can you just take him so i can wipe my ass or something <laughs> sure. like, I, I just, just need I'm, five minutes yeah mm -hmm. which i mean i i know it's not gonna be a problem i just i feel like it's only going to be a problem because we don't want to ask mm -hmm. we don't want to ask for help. I think that's the only way that it will become a problem. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's kind of the idea of uh, accepting the old adage of it takes a village uh, when it comes to raising right, and, and caring for children, for sure. Yes, I 100% agree. I mean, you saw that firsthand between family, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents um, you had as well. And then, of course, at least one amazing uncle. <laughs> <laughs> the only uncle. <laughs> I mean, you, have, you have another one. Though I haven't seen him in a very long time. So biologically, I, sure. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. 
your favorite uncle. <laughs> the uh, going uh, bringing us back to that idea of finding yourself, and again, being very youthful. Um, we'll be turning twenty one this year. Uh, I know that the the conversation is a little bit biased because you are still in the in the midst of figuring out who you are, right? So if we rewind time and you go back as far as you can think and then view yourself over time. So if you can go back to like elementary school and then go to middle school and then go to high school and then to what it is to graduate and begin the the workforce and dealing with more adult concerns to where you are now, which is kind of at the precipice of parenthood, right? What do you feel have been moments or things that have been significant for you to find yourself, to discover those things? Um, elementary, I, I, I feel like middle school is kind of a, a big one. Okay. Oh. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I feel like it told me I have 10%, but I think we're okay. <laughs> um, middle school would probably be one of the bigger ones because, I mean, I feel like middle school is kind of a lot. That's kind of where you are figuring out who you are and whatnot. Going through puberty, um, the whole shebang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and high school I, and i feel like for my uh, my job grandma had a lot to do with that and grandpa had a lot to do with that grandpa brandon um so i think with my job career wise that has affected how i am today now mm -hmm. um a little background is grandpa was on hospice um so i i saw that a little bit and then grandma, she had leukemia. She was staying at the house, to, like taking care of her and stuff. Um, and I think I found my passion for that after grandma passed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then middle school, I don't know. Look, I'm having pregnancy brain right now, and I, <laughs> I'm losing my job. No, that's um, okay. <laughs> It really sounds like it's through being in situations and experiencing things that what you're saying is you found things that you don't, you didn't like, such as basketball, right? Or things that you have liked, such as like the kind of taking on the role of a caretaker and helping people in kind of like their moments of need. Yeah. Yeah. I can see you thinking or trying to think. Yeah, I was going to say there's one for middle school, but I just... <laughs> what about you? For me? Finding yeah. myself. Hmm. Um, this might sound weird or bad. I'm not, I'm not sure. But I've, I feel like I've largely always been me. Um, I don't feel like I think differently. Uh, I think in additionally to how I've always thought. Um, and it's through like the shitty experiences that, uh, some of which you're aware of that we were raised in, but being blessed to have grandparents and aunts and uncles uh, and like extended family that showed the other side of that coin, if you will. Um, so those things became more ingrained. Um, I have always had a dark sense of humor and like a profound reliance on humor because I view humor as the cornerstone of happiness for anyone right? Um, bad things can happen and my brain will find the humor in them. Then as I've gotten older and more intentional, 
uh, and I've had my own struggles, um, s- some of which you are well aware of, is as I've become more intentional of finding life's lessons that has created, uh, at least at this point, the greatest version of me, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because if a good thing happens, I want to understand the lesson. If a bad thing happens, I want to understand uh, the lesson that I'm supposed to learn from it. Because um, there, there's always a takeaway to be better. And since I've been m- very mindful of that, um, has helped me understand who I am. And like literally understanding the capacity of um, what it is to to find yourself, which I hope I never do, if I'm being honest with you, because uh, I don't, I feel like the, the moment you feel like you've made it or here you are, I feel like it, that's a negative. Um, it's where when we become complacent. Um, but for me, it's always like seeking to be better. And it can be at like silly little novel things, or it can be at greater things, such as like, what does it look like to show up in a relationship better or something like that? I'm going to switch it up. You're the one always asking us questions, so I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. What what is one thing that you would tell your your past self? Like you, yeah. So like, what's one thing that you would tell the the past version of you, like ten years ago? um, Advice for the future. Yeah. So as you said that, uh, I'm not saying this is the most like profound or impactful thing, but as you said, it's the memory that triggered in my head, which was actually a video I saw at some point. I can't remember who's there, so I'm going to potentially make some stuff up. I think uh, Shia LeBeau, I think um, Tom Hanks, Adam Sandler. um, There's a couple others, too, that I can't place. Will Smith? Nope. Oh, um, no. Oh. We're all, they were all at a table having a conversation, and I can't remember. I think it was actually Tom Hanks says this. He says when, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase, when life is falling apart and you can't get jobs and it feels like loss after loss after loss, it's the understanding that um this too shall pass when life is great and you feel like you're on top of the world and everything is going perfectly well right and life is just amazing it's the understanding that this too shall pass right is and that created the idea of no matter how good or how bad a thing is there's the idea that there's always tomorrow right is that all things will will kind of come to an end, but there's peace in that idea, right? So you're having a bad day, you'll get over it. You're having a good day, you'll get over it, right? Um, And I think you people can choose to take that and it sound sad, um, but I choose to, to view that and allow that to create such a profound level of control over our own lives. Right, which is why I don't. I choose not to have drama in mine. Yeah, mom. I remember she would always used to tell me this, and this has stuck with me ever since. Is if it's not going to matter in ten years, why does it matter now? Sure. Which it's, I love. Go ahead. I was going to say, which you with certain things like don't stress about like sure high school like in high school you know you're stressing about your hair or something girlfriend that's not gonna matter in 10 years don't worry it's like stop stressing yourself out you know yep but i i I think you're gonna say you can take that (laughs) yeah 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 Uh, i think it's the idea of um well this is what i'll leave everyone with because we always try to 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 drop a bit of a nugget which we just did too and i'm gonna leave uh with with this last one, because I know your phone's about to die, is the idea 
um, this is a little more faith oriented, which is the, the premise of the serenity prayer, right? It is whether you believe in a higher power or, or otherwise, it's the understanding of, um, being able to understand the things that you have control over and the things that you don't, right? And having the courage to take action on the things that you do and the wisdom to know the difference, essentially. So to let go of the things you can't control, to take action on the things that you can, and then after that is just all gratitude. Right? I've had a, a friend currently challenge the idea of... Um, I said, good morning. And he said, is it? Right? And I said, bitch, did you wake up? And he said, yep. And then I said, well, then it sure is. <laughs> See, I love that about you, though, is because that's one thing that I, I admire about you is <laughs> just, like an example of what you just said is you're like, you better fix yourself before you wreck yourself because, yeah, you did wake up and you should be thankful for another day because some people don't get it. Or they're laying in bed 24-7 because they can't get up. The gratitude and gratefulness is is purely per perception. So if you view your life through the things that you don't have, right, it's going to feel like a shit life. If you choose to view your life through the things you do have, such as me getting to spend these two hours with you, right, it makes me feel profoundly grateful. One that you were willing to take the time to have a conversation, even though you, you knew some of those things we would talk about would be difficult, right? Th that you are willing to do that and to experience hopefully some of the joys um, through going through that. I mean, we laughed and chuckled a bit. We doted on your brother a bit. Um, so like it, it's sharing in like real things. And I'm always grateful for that. Uh, I think most people are in most of my life. I wasn't right, uh, is that I would take most things for granted, right, um, until I understood that the only currency that matters in life is time, and any moment that somebody gives me some of that currency, I want to be profoundly grateful. I mean, cause for, for us, these are two hours you won't get back. Yeah, um, not that I'm saying you're old. <laughs> but I feel like you're older, so you've learned a lot. And I feel like, I again, generation, we do take things for granted quite a bit. Sure. And it's understandable, because if you have $10 billion, it's easy to take $10 million as granted, right? It, it doesn't mean anything. But when the bank account starts getting low, right, $10 can make the world of a difference. So when, mm -hmm. when you're young and youthful, it sounds like you have an abundance of time and energy and all of those things. And as we get older, that um, we understand more so that that's not necessarily true, not just in like the idea, but the reality of such, um, which yeah. isn't some people take that to be a sad thing. And I, I don't believe that uh, to be the case. Again, Joss, I want to say thank you for giving me your time. This hopefully wonderful, I don't see any sun, but um, still wonderful uh, Friday at this point. Uh, of course, if you're tuning in and listening uh, to this series, the uh, first topic is uh, that of hobbies and activities that you feel are beneficial to your life. Uh, the second topic was the idea of life and specifically in the, the boundaries of uh, cleaning and decluttering life, followed by managing frustration and anger. And then fourth and last was finding yourself. Before we head off, Joss, is there any nugget that you would want folks to take away from our conversations today? Um. Make time for you. And it doesn't that. always mean that you wish. Because yep. I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. <laughs> I like I love that. Kind of the idea of taking time for yourself doesn't mean you're selfish. Yeah. Yep. As I said that, I literally saw saw a shellfish in my head. 
<laughs> I know we're getting off topic again, Joss. Thank you for uh, joining me. Of course, anyone that is tuning in, if you want to touch base with me for advancement advising, you can do so at j-tm.community. If you want podcast specific stuff, just add a forward slash podcast to that. It'll take you exactly where you want to be. If you want to be a part of the community, which we always have um, uh, daily posts throughout the the week uh, with a new episode goes live on Monday, a new poll goes live. You all dictate um, what the, the topics are and essentially uh, select it and vote for for them. If you need a little bit of motivation, inspiration, human connection, and a little bit of humor uh, from time to time, of course, uh, join the, the community. The easiest thing that you can do is join the Facebook community because everything gets posted there um, as we move forward. I know we'll talk beforehand, but I want to say congratulations on little, uh, I'm going to pull one from Boba, on little Pugsley. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joss, again, for uh, being part of this. And thank you for anyone that who has tuned in and for being part of a community where you belong.